Thank you for staying with us, and if you've just joined us, you are tuned in to Moving Forward, mm -hmm. a program designed to do exactly as the name suggests, mm -hmm. just move this nation forward to the best of our ability. Our guest this evening is uh, Professor Christopher Curry of the University of the Bahamas, and he gave us a wonderful introduction mm -hmm. to himself mm -hmm. and to the topic. Mm -hmm. We are going to uh, try to streamline mm -hmm. the discussion because mm -hmm. I know we can talk oh, all yes, evening, yes. but we have only a mm -hmm. short time. Mm -hmm. And as we established mm -hmm. a little while ago, uh, the transatlantic mm -hmm. uh, slave trade was, mm -hmm. uh, was established by the Portuguese. The Portuguese, they found a route to mm -hmm. the east by way of mm -hmm. Africa around yeah. the Cape, mm -hmm. and they realized that there were these huge mm -hmm. numbers of persons there. And when they discovered the need for labor, mm -hmm. then they saw it mm -hmm. as a source of trade mm -hmm. and wealth. They were followed by you know, the Dutch, the French, mm -hmm. and um, the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. Well, the Spaniards were second, I think. Mm -hmm. The English stayed relatively free of that for a while. Yes, yes. For, for a while, for because for they bit. concentrated their mm -hmm. trading activities mm -hmm. around Europe. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. After a while, I think it was around 1562, thereabouts, when John Hawkins yeah. decided that he was going to join the trade, and mm -hmm. along with his uh, what cousin or nephew, Sir Francis Drake, yeah. was his cousin, I think. Uh, yeah. They embarked on a voyage, mm -hmm. got some Africans, sold them on the Spanish main, mm -hmm. thereby entering um, England into mm -hmm. the slave trade. Right, so let's talk about the colonization of the Caribbean by the British and also the mainland territories. I, I would argue that there is a period of fluidity. What I mean by that, in the early uh, 16th and into the 17th century, um, racial uh, divisions were not encoded or enshrined in law mm -hmm. as they would mm -hmm. eventually become. So for example, if you look at Virginia, which is the first North American colony that's colonized by the British, uh, 1609, you know, you probably would have seen Disney the film Pocahontas, you have John Smith and Rolf, and, and um, uh, that, that relationship was, was um, complicated. But the point I want to make is the first shipment of enslaved persons comes into Virginia in 1619. And in this period, you would have had white indentured servants working alongside um, enslaved Africans. There's a guy named Anthony Johnson. If you ever watched some of Henry Louis Gates's films, mm -hmm. you would see this person featured. He comes in enslaved, but because there is a fluidity, there's no laws per se, uh, he's able to work uh, to a point where he earns his freedom. He becomes a freeholder, and eventually he actually owns enslaved persons himself. Well, it, it, stick a pin there. Yeah. Let's go back mm -hmm. to the origin of the mm -hmm. trade from Africa. Mm -hmm. Many of the African chiefs Yes, yes. Themselves participated. They facilitated. There's, the a, there's a great book you should read. Randy Starks has a book called The Two Princes of Calabar. Mm -hmm. And in it, he shows these two princes who controlled the trade of, of enslaved persons mm -hmm. in the Bight of Biafra. They actually accidentally get enslaved themselves, go all across the Atlantic world, end up in Antigua, and then they're shipped to uh, the 13 colonies, end up in England where they fight their case before I believe Lord Somerset, who was mm -hmm. the same guy who presided over uh, Samuel Sharp's case. Mm -hmm. Then they are freed legally, go back to Africa, and would you believe <laughs> Urban Moss, you know what they end up doing? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing again. But, but get, let me get back to my point. The, the <laughs> English um, in this early period did not have rigid, regulated slave laws. But what happens is, particularly with the sugar revolution in Barbados, okay, mm -hmm. and the tobacco revolution in Virginia and Maryland, mm -hmm. is there's a shift away from white indentured servants to a larger labor population that is going to be more coerced, more controlled, more regulated. Mm -hmm. So by 1661, almost simultaneously in Virginia and in Barbados, you now have the first set of slave codes that are passed. And now they're going to identify in law and define in law that an enslaved person is different from a mm -hmm. white person, mm -hmm. that an enslaved person is chattel. An enslaved person can't move around, must have permission, must have a pass. If he carries a weapon, that's punishable by, by flogging. Yes. Uh, if, he, if he conceals a weapon, that's punishable. If he assembles in groups of more than five or six, that's a punishable offense. So all of these regulations, all of these laws are now passed that create a demarcation, a line mm -hmm. that says whiteness yes. means free yes. and privilege. Yes. Blackness 
African means yes. enslaved, and not just enslaved, right. but chattel. And property. from there it went downhill. Oh yeah, now you have then, and this is where I'm, I'm guess we're, we're, we're building on the notion that there is a nascent racial ideology at the, at the outset, but we're saying now with the presence of a plantation system now, you have the acceleration of a racial ideology that is going to create the subjugation mm -hmm. and the means of subjugation of enslaving large numbers of Africans mm -hmm. Uh, and creating an ideology that says that whiteness is superior and Africanness or blackness is inferior. That's all part of a very complex racial ideology. It is, and I insist that it was also to mm -hmm. give cover to those Christians mm -hmm. who operated. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it, mm -hmm. John Hawkins on his first voyage, he mm -hmm. had three ships. One was owned by the queen mm -hmm. in a slave trade, so they were intricate. Yeah, and that, let's make sure, because I'll tell you this, and this is a plug, I, I chair the National Reparations Commission as well. Yes. And I want to say that from the outset, the, the crown, the monarchy was integral to the whole operating That's of right. this triangular trade. That's right. They were, they were complicit from the outset. They remained so well until the uh, 18th and 19th century. Well, the thing is, and this is a good point to mention, is in 1807, Britain um, passed the abolition of the slave trade yes. act. Mm -hmm. Now, that was when they said no, no ships right. should carry slaves yeah. uh, in, the, in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. They empowered their navy mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. stop, board mm -hmm. any ships suspected yes. of carrying yes. African captives, and if confirmed, take them off mm -hmm. the, the ship, put them on mm -hmm. the British ship, Mm -hmm. deliver them to the nearest mm -hmm. British colony. But here's it. Mm -hmm. People are saying, yay, for Britain. But it was an economic decision. You see, because mm -hmm. Spain, France were growing wealthy mm -hmm. from the tr slave trade, mm -hmm. Britain was left behind. They came in late, mm -hmm. and they were left behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, from about 1561, mm -hmm. Britain uh, built up a navy superior. Yes to all of those other European countries. And so Britain used a mm -hmm. superior naval power to stop them. So they didn't do that mm -hmm. to free mm -hmm. the uh, captives. Well, let, let, let's take this uh, back a little further, because you're absolutely right. And you sound like you've read Eric Williams' uh, Capitalism and Slavery. I would argue that there was a, a movement, a moral uh, and I, perhaps even ideological movement, the abolitionists, uh, beginning with the Quakers in the 1760s, 1770s, in both the United States, well, the 13 colonies, and in Great Britain. Uh, there were also some Methodists, like John yes, Wesley. Oh, yes, and, 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 and Bill his, William, William right, Bill, right. Uh, he was the Anglican. Right, and, yeah. and John Newton, but yeah. wrote that great hymn, uh, Amazing Grace. Yes, but, but, but these guys, I'm gonna argue, were not really uh, in it for true abolition. Yes. They were into the notion that slavery was inhumane and degrading. What needs to happen is it needs to be reformed. Yes. It needs to be changed. Because they would argue that these persons were humans yes. now. Yes, and right? should be treated. And should be treated uh, 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 humanely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe they were radical enough to think that abolishing slavery was the answer. For them, they saw that the worst and most inhumane part of slavery was the, the triangular trade, the middle passage. Yes, yes. So, so that is why they initially didn't go for abolishing slavery entirely. They That's just right. went for elevating the elevating the conditions. And, and, the right. And so this is where you have a period they call the ameliorating period. Ameliorating period improving the right, treatment. Which is looking at, and this is why first they p passed the, the act to end the slave trade to get rid of the middle passage, but rightfully plantations continued to operate yes. and people continued to be enslaved throughout the Caribbean. Okay, um, but, but they thought they got rid of the worst part of it. The problem they didn't realize was that the inhumanity of slavery itself continued yes. and was being perpetuated by evil, wicked planters who were still trying to extract as much labor as they could out of mm -hmm. those enslaved individuals. So then they think, okay, let's ameliorate by improving these things. So they say, okay, now according to 1823 Amelioration Act, you have to provide food, mm -hmm. you have to provide clothing, you have to provide shelter. And you can't work them. And, and women are now being recognized yes. as being distinct. Before they enslaved women had a double burden. They had yeah. to go out in the field and work 18 hours long. They also had to carry a baby on their back and sure. breastfeed. So now they're saying we're gonna extend the breast uh, feeding period for women. We're going to recognize that they should not be flogged like men, like those sort of things. But you know what? There's a profound 
notion, in my opinion, that amelioration itself also was a failure. It was. And the reason I say that is because in every instance, enslaved persons in the Caribbean uh, continue to rebel, mm -hmm. continue to revolt, continue to resist on a day-to-day -day basis because they realized that the actions of the white abolitionists in England was coming out of a conservative ideology, mm -hmm. a mindset of reform rather than revolution or complete abolition. And I read an article some years ago which suggested mm -hmm. that Britain wanted to weaken mm -hmm. her neighboring countries mm -hmm. economically. Yeah. And since they depended heavily on the slave trade and mm -hmm. Britain had this the might mm -hmm. on the seas to prevent that, mm -hmm. Britain wanted to shut that off, but mm -hmm. not really because of any desire mm -hmm. to free the slaves or improve the conditions of slave because mm -hmm. the slaves were dropped off right. at the nearest. You're, you're, right, you're talking about the liberated Africans. Yes, the, liber right. yeah, the, the yeah. captives yeah. at the nearest uh, British colony, mm -hmm. and they were just left. I mean, and I always argue in my classes, if they were to be truly liberated, would yes. they not have turned those ships around and gone back Take to them Africa, back. taking right. them back to the domicile, the place they came they from? They simply wanted to deprive the right. Spaniards and the French and right. the Dutch mm -hmm. from profiting exactly from uh, the sale of those yeah. captives. And okay, but let's move on. In eighteen thirty-three. Mm -hmm. they, the Britain passed the uh, Abolition of Slave Act, mm -hmm. which was implemented yeah. in the well, following yeah, year. Yeah. And what happened then? Well, um, give me the attachment. Yeah, to that, the, 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 the attachment the to that is that it was a big farce, in my opinion. The That's reason right. I say That's that right. is because, first of all, it gave you paper freedom, which meant absolutely enough. Because, along with the abolition act, came a whole another period of of indentureship, uh, indentureship, and enslavement. Because mm -hmm. apprenticeship meant that you had to work forty and a half hours without pay for your former master. All right, without pay. What does that sound like? It sounds like slavery with Living another name. Living in the same quarters in doing the same, the same work yes everything is same and no, the only difference is and you could see this only as a, as a time yes, yes yes well not just that they they now had a more institutionalized system of punishment meaning yeah. that uh -huh. they had stipendary magistrates who were to oversee any punishment that was to be meted out mm -hmm. on the now apprentices mm -hmm. uh, so they now created well they had workhouses already but any conflict wage dispute or, or any other labor dispute had to be brought before the SM and he would adjudicate and determine the punishment. Right. But the thing here is you're still working without pay and you're still being punished. The punishment now is taken out of the hands of the individual owner but it's still placed in the hands of a magistrate right. who is always going to favor And who is from the master. He's drawn from Yes, them. and he's staying because most of them are poor Irishmen or Englishmen. Uh, and so when they come to the Bahamas or Jamaica they end up staying in the Great House. That's where they're going to be staying right. overnight. They don't have hotels in to stay in. Initially, the, the uh, period of apprenticeship was six years for the field workers. They, they, and four right, years they, they for classified the others. them as paradial and non paradial. That's, that's correct. Isn't that something? But it was such a farce <laughs> and it was such a failure, they reduced it from eight years four for the paradials to just four. And they just got rid of it in four years. And that's why we have the, the other date that people sometimes forget is August 1st, 1838. That's right. Because that's, that's when, when they we were really full emancipation. Full freedom. But even that's a farce. It is. But <laughs> I don't want to, us to run out of time because there's so much left to be mm -hmm. said. You talked about reparation. Mm -hmm. At that time, mm -hmm. Britain compensated mm -hmm. the slave owners uh -huh. and they gave nothing to the slaves. And that's what reparation well, that, that is. That yes. So, so the, the profound irony is that you had a whole workforce that had been unpaid for the entirety of their laboring lives. And at the time when they were supposed to receive freedom and compensation yes. for not being paid at all, the people who had profited from their labor were the ones that were compensated at a tune of over $10 million. Yes, well, and, and Vereen Shepherd to this day, she's the chair of the Jamaican Reparations Commission, has said that would be worth in today's value over a billion dollars. That, that's right. Mm -hmm. But I like the record that I saw mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. that the slave owner mm -hmm. was compensated at a tune of 10 pounds, 14 shillings and four pence. For each slave. Yes, and in the Bahamas, let's make clear, there were 10,000 enslaved persons that's at right. the time of abolition. That's right, that's right. So you could just imagine, even uh, in a, in a non-plantation slaveholding right, society, that's right, that's right. you know, uh, we really didn't have uh, any export crop or staple crop uh, to speak of, yet we had 10,000 persons that were still enslaved. That's something. We're going to take another break. And we're coming back and we really have to expedite it because there's so much more information we want to share with you. Don't go away, folks.
Only love can save us now. Only 